more and more people are enjoying recording themselves playing piano and sharing it on social media. Sometimes to get advice from other pianists through the various piano groups that there are on Facebook, for example, and other times really just for the hell of it. I found that the Shore MV88 has been a fantastic investment, and today I'd like to do a deep dive into how you can get the most from this microphone when you're recording yourself. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Welcome to Tommy's Piano Corner, I'm Tommy. This is the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas about how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first visit here, then I invite you to subscribe so that you can get regular weekly piano related content. In a previous video, I introduced this microphone, the Shure MV88, as a great option if you want to be able to record yourself simply using just your smartphone. Without getting too technical, the Shure MV88 is a condenser microphone and this is a type of microphone that's very popular with recording studios as they're very sensitive microphones. And Shure brought this one out specifically so that you can effectively have your own small little portable recording setup with just your phone and this microphone plugged straight into it. As with many things these days, the microphone is really largely plug and play. You plug it straight into your phone, you press record and off you go. However, you're able to actually control it to quite a good degree if you download the Freeshore Motive app to your phone. And today I'd like to take you into the different things that you can actually change using this app. This is what you get out of the box. The microphone comes with a neat carry case, making it easy to transport safely. There's also a windshield to help dissipate the effect of wind when recording outside. It also has a small headphone connector cable that you can use if you want to be able to monitor what the microphone's picking up. In addition to these accessories, the basic features of the microphone that you can see from the outside are these. First, you can twist the microphone through 90 degrees so that you can position it really flexibly when you're recording. The second thing that it's certified specifically for uses with any Apple device with a lightning connector, including you can plug it in in either direction. And finally, you can see an indication of the left and the right sides, which will help you when you're positioning it. However, what you can't see from the outside is that it also has five preloaded settings to quickly get the best results in different situations. When recording speech or singing or an acoustic instrument such as guitar, for example. You can then make fine adjustments to any of these settings using the dedicated iOS Shure Motive app. The first thing to notice about the Shure MV88 is that it's a stereo microphone. Now the one on your phone is almost certainly going to be mono. What stereo means is that it picks up sound both from the left, the center and the right. So that you'll notice when you listen to music through headphones, there are certain sounds that are louder in your left ear, certain that are louder in your right ear and others that appear to be coming directly from in front of you. This comes in very handy when you're recording your piano for social media because, of course, almost certainly people that listen to it will be watching it on their device and then listening through their headphones 
and subconsciously they'll expect a stereo sound and not a mono sound. To show you better what I mean, let's open the app without plugging in the microphone. You can see here at the top of the screen where you've got this input monitor, so the little green line that moves up and down, then there's only one of these lines when you have no microphone plugged into the phone. And that's of course because the app is picking up sound from the built-in microphone. Now if we open it again when the microphone's plugged in, you'll see that instead of one small strip, we now have two small green lines. And this then shows you that the microphone's getting sound from both sides and it's producing a stereo signal. Now let's dive into the Motive app itself to see how we can actually control the microphone. Earlier I mentioned that it has a set of what are called presets. Now a preset is effectively a set of different values that have been pre-configured into the device for you by very experienced engineers to help you get the best results in any given circumstance. Now of course, they can't be 100% perfect all of the time because the engineers can't know exactly what room you were in, exactly what conditions you were filming in, but they give you a whole set of values that you can fine tune later if you need to, but they're always a good starting point. The presets that you get are for speech, so just normal talking, for singing, for acoustic instruments, there's a loud preset, so for, you know, loud situations such as a rock concert. And then there's what they call the flat preset, which is effectively with nothing preset at all. It's just completely blank values. What these presets actually do is they control three main parameters with the microphone. The first is the stereo width, so how wide a field that the microphone will pick up some sound from. The second is the equalization. And the third is the compression. So let's have a look at each of these in turn. Now the stereo width, as I said, is basically how wide an area the microphone picks up sound from. So for example, if it was picking up a very narrow stereo width, then it would look something like this when you look at it in the app. If it was picking up a much wider width, then it would look more like this. So for example, if we were in a situation where we were trying to pick up speech, so we were using the speech preset, then you'd effectively have a quite a narrow stereo width because you would really only want the microphone to pick up sound coming from directly in front of it. As normally, when you record somebody speaking to you, you put the microphone towards that person's mouth. This way, the microphone will only take the sound coming from in front, and any sound that comes from the sides or behind, it will try to reject it. But of course, if you were in a different situation, such as a concert, then you really want to pick up sound from a much broader area in front of you, because you'll have instruments to the left, to the right, and to the center of the stage. So here, you'd want to use a different preset, say the acoustic setting or the loud setting. The second setting then is equalization. I did speak about this at some length in my video about adding equalization to recordings of your piano playing using GarageBand. I've linked the video here in case you want to go and get some more information on what it is. But in short, all it is really is it's boosting or lowering certain parts of the sound to make it sound more even. So for example, if you're recording just a human voice, then you can boost the frequencies where the voice is more present and then lower the frequencies where you're not going to be picking up sound. The final setting then is compression. And this is something that I haven't talked about before. Now compression is one of these strange things that's both very, very simple and very, very complex, if that makes any sense. Imagine, for example, you're recording somebody speaking and that person's both whispering and shouting in the same recording. What compression would try to do is it would try to slightly increase the volume of the whispers so that you can hear them better and slightly reduce the volume of the shouting for you. 
As always, for we enthusiastic amateurs, I advise just using the presets because otherwise it can get very technical. When I've recorded myself play, I've tended to use the acoustic setting, so that's the one with the little guitar symbol on it in the app itself. Of course, I guess this is really designed for quieter instruments such as a guitar, and a piano is, let's say, everything from very quiet to very loud. So of course, we're gonna to need to do more than just use the basic preset to be able to record our piano. And the main thing that we're gonna to need to look at is what they call the microphone gain. Now the gain on a microphone is almost opposite to the volume, I guess you could say. In that, the higher you set the gain, the more sensitive the microphone will be to sound and therefore the quieter sounds will get picked up better. If you set the gain very low, the microphone will be a lot less sensitive to sound, so it might not pick up very quiet sounds at all, but it will manage to pick up loud sounds without making them distort. When it comes to setting the gain yourself, this is probably the one time that you will need to phone a friend to help you. The reason you'll need to do this is that whilst it's not at all difficult to set the gain, You've got to remember that when you're playing, your phone and therefore your microphone will probably not be near you, so you won't be able to see what's going on. Basically, all you need to do is you plug the microphone into the phone, you position it where you want it to be, and then you get your friend to watch it closely while you start playing from some very quiet and to some very loud passages. And what your friend then needs to do is to adjust the gain on the screen any time they see, for example, that it's going into the red, this means that the gain's too high and it needs to be lowered a little bit. The end result is that when you're playing the loudest passages, your monitors should go as far into the yellow as possible without ever going red. There are a few other settings that you'll come across if you look into the depths of the app. One of these is the polar pattern. Now, to be honest, for recording your piano, you don't really need to worry about this. You just want to set the stereo pattern. But effectively, you can use a pattern that only picks up sound from the left and from the right and ignores sound to the front. Or you can pick a pattern that picks up sound from all around the microphone. And then the last effect that you'll see is called the limiter. So the limit is a little like the compressor in the sense that it tries to limit the loudest sounds so that they won't distort when you record them. However, unlike compression, the limiter doesn't try to increase the volume of quieter sounds. I hope this video has helped you see if the Shure MV88 might be a good choice of microphone for you for recording your piano. If you're not already, then please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner and of course click that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.